Hey everyone, Nigel and Luke here, and welcome to Crime Zone. Probably one of the most cliche sayings in all of Western culture is that money is the root of all evil. While the phrase is not meant to be literally true, it is often the case that money complicates even the strongest bonds of family or friendship, and that greed, more broadly, can motivate people to do some truly awful things. There is perhaps no better example of this than when people are willing to take the lives of those closest to them just to get access to money or valuables that they likely would have gotten eventually anyway, such as with an inheritance. Sadly, in these cases, whether out of pure greed or desperation, perpetrators value their expected payday over human life. Today, we wanted to take a look at two such stories, particularly dark cases where children killed their own parents or family members, believing that it would allow them to claim their inheritance. Before we get to the videos, don't forget to like and subscribe to Crime Zone for more true crime content like this. It really helps us to continue building the channel. And if you've watched a few of our videos already, you might not even realize that you're not subscribed. While you're there, don't forget to hit the notification bell to stay up to date with our latest releases. With that out of the way, here is part one of two people who murdered for their inheritance. At approximately 9.15 p.m. on the night of November 15, 2013, police in Sedgwick County, Kansas received a frantic 911 call. The call was from 16-year-old Christopher Blummel, who had arrived home that evening to find a horrific scene waiting for him. Christopher's adoptive parents, 53-year-old Melissa and 48-year-old Roger Blummel, were lying unresponsive in their pickup truck on the driveway. Both had been shot once in the head. When authorities arrived on the rural property in the small city of Valley Center, they found Roger and Melissa Blummel barely clinging to life. Melissa's purse and Roger's cell phone and keys also appeared to be missing. The couple were quickly rushed to a hospital in nearby Wichita, where doctors desperately tried to save their lives. Sadly, Melissa would die from her injuries the next day, while Roger would remain in critical condition. The crime was a shocking blow to many residents of Valley Center. The Blummels were a well-liked and respected couple who were deeply involved in many school and community activities. Melissa was the vice president of the Chisholm Trail State Bank in Park City and was described by friends and family members as one of the kindest people you could ever meet. She cared about people and was deeply family-oriented. Roger Blummel was equally adored by those around him. Quick with a joke and easy to talk to, he had found considerable success as a salesman and was the kind of person who always made sure everyone around him was laughing. Less than a week after the shooting, as community and family members were still struggling to process what had happened to Roger and Melissa, authorities released a second shocking announcement. Four people had been arrested in connection with the case, including the couple's second adopted son, 18-year-old Anthony Blummel. The revelation seemed to make no sense. Just a few months earlier, Anthony had graduated from Valley Center High School and had seemed like a normal and happy teenager. During his time at the school, he had been known for his athletic achievements, playing football and eventually becoming a star on the wrestling team. In his senior year, Anthony had taken second place in the 160-pound division at the Class 5A State Wrestling Championship. Roger and Melissa had been right there alongside him to celebrate. The teenager told those around him that upon graduation, he aspired to join the Air Force. However, Anthony's name wasn't the only one on the list of arrests to draw attention. In addition to two former classmates at Valley Center High, 18-year-old Brayden Smith and Andrew Ellington, police had also arrested Anthony and Christopher Blummel's biological mother, 35-year-old Kisha Shaberg. Though police refused to release much information to the public in the early days of the investigation, some important details made their way into local news reports. The most shocking of these details was that at the time that Roger and Melissa were shot, Anthony was no longer living with them. In fact, he had been living with Kisha Shaberg for nearly two months. This came as a surprise to many who knew Roger and Melissa. The couple had adopted Anthony and Christopher when they were about six and four years old, and Kisha had not been a part of their lives since. Life at the Blummel house was a sharp contrast to the turbulent home life that the boys had experienced before their adoption. One of Roger and Melissa's friends would later recount a heartbreaking story that they had been told by the couple, in which on one of the first nights after the boys had been adopted, they were shocked to find out that they would be allowed to eat dinner every night. By all accounts, the Blummels had been the perfect parents, and many were wondering how one of their beloved children could have possibly turned against them. 
Some of these details were soon filled in by a woman named Sean Hamilton, the girlfriend of Kisha Sheberg. According to Hamilton, Kisha and Anthony had reconnected on Facebook in the months before the shooting of Roger and Melissa. It was this that had led Anthony to move in with her in September of 2013. According to Hamilton, contrary to what many people believed, by that summer Anthony's life was in a downward spiral. He had been kicked out of his adopted parents' home after refusing to get a job and smoking marijuana all the time, and was engaged in a destructive cycle of drug use and partying. Kisha was quick to invite Anthony to live with her in Hamilton in California, even allowing him to bring along his friend Braden Smith to stay with them as well. Hamilton said that this arrangement was fine with her at the beginning, but quickly devolved into a tense and unhealthy situation. Upon arriving, Anthony and Braden still refused to get jobs. They continued to engage in frequent drug use, accompanied by Kisha, who was also unemployed. Hamilton, meanwhile, worked two jobs to keep the household afloat and to take care of Kisha's seven-year-old daughter from a previous relationship. Things finally came to a head six weeks later, when Hamilton arrived home from a night out with friends to find drug paraphernalia all over the house and patio within reach of Kisha's seven-year-old daughter. Worried about what would happen to the child, she told Kisha that Anthony and Braden needed to leave. Kisha responded by saying she was also leaving and would be taking her daughter with her. On October 30th, roughly two weeks before the shootings, Anthony, Braden, Kisha, and Kisha's daughter piled into Braden's Nissan Altima. They said that they planned to return to Kansas and had jobs lined up there. Though Hamilton had no way of knowing that this was a lie at the time, she would later recount a disturbing comment that Anthony made one night while they were eating dinner. He said that if anything ever happened to his adopted parents, he believed that he stood to benefit financially. On November 25th, prosecutors announced that they were moving ahead with charges against the four suspects in the case, saying that each would be charged with first-degree murder and attempted first-degree murder. Some were also charged with two counts of aggravated robbery, burglary, and theft. Less than a month later, investigators announced that they had recovered shell casings, a purse, and a gun wrapped in a long-sleeved t-shirt. Though they did not reveal where the items had been found, it was believed that all of them were related to the shooting. Though we do not know for sure, based on the fact that police extensively searched parks and outdoor areas around the crime scene, it's safe to assume that this is where the items were recovered. Authorities also said that they would likely only get one shot at obtaining a usable DNA sample from the items because of where the items had been found, again suggesting that they had been exposed to the elements. In addition to the physical evidence, police also cited disturbing posts that Anthony had made to his Twitter account around the time of the murders. The day before, he had posted the rap lyrics, I got ice in my veins, blood in my eyes, hate in my heart. On the day the killings took place, he posted, Remember the name. The next day, things took an abrupt turn when he posted, Dear Mama, I'll love you forever. Sadly, on December 21st, 2013, Roger Blummel succumbed to his injuries from the shooting and was pronounced dead at the hospital. This further escalated the importance of the case, as under Kansas state law, all four defendants could potentially be facing capital murder charges, which could lead to a sentence of death. In the months that followed, not only were all four of the suspects charged with capital murder, but prosecutors announced that they would be seeking the death penalty in each case. It was reportedly the first time this had ever happened since Kansas reinstated the death penalty in 1994. Realizing that evidence in the case was mounting against them, and knowing that they were now facing death if convicted, it didn't take long for one of the suspects to crack. In July of 2014, it was reported that Braden Smith had reached a plea deal with prosecutors. In exchange for testifying against the other three suspects, he would have his murder charges lowered to second-degree intentional murder, and he would not be charged with any of the secondary counts of aggravated robbery or burglary charges. Along with Braden's testimony came a flood of new information about the case that was previously unknown to the public. The most shocking detail was the alleged motive behind the crime. Roger and Melissa had been killed out of hatred and for their money. According to Braden, Anthony had resented being kicked out by his adopted parents and hated what he felt to be their overly strict rules. He said that he had always felt that the couple had liked Christopher more than him and that his brother had been given anything that he wanted. Braden claimed that during their time in California, Anthony had talked openly about how he believed that he would benefit from Roger and Melissa's will if they died. He soon realized that Kisha had a mutual hatred for the couple, as she believed that Roger and Melissa had tried to turn their sons against her. She was particularly upset that even after reconnecting with Anthony, that Christopher had not wanted to have a relationship with her. 
Brayden said that the three of them had then concocted a plan to kill the Blummels over a period of weeks, deciding to go through with it when they had been kicked out of Sean Hamilton's house at the end of October of 2013. Andrew Ellington was brought into the scheme after Brayden had second thoughts about actually participating in the murders. He still supplied them with guns, but recruited Ellington to be the driver. On the night of November 15th, Anthony had taken Roger and Melissa out for dinner, while Kish and Ellington drove to the rural property in Valley Center and awaited their return. While there, they ransacked the house, stealing any cash and valuables they could find. The group chose the night of the 15th specifically because they knew that Christopher had a wrestling meet and would not be home. When Roger and Melissa arrived home, Kisha exited the house and walked up the driveway. Startled, Melissa barely had time to react before Kisha was blocking her car door with a gun in her hand. Her last words were, oh my gosh, Kisha, before she was shot in the head. In an extreme state of distress, all Roger could do was try to tend to his wife before Kisha walked around to the other side of the vehicle and shot him as well. Brayden claimed that following the killing, her and Ellington had driven to where he was staying and that they had dealt with the evidence. The following day, Brayden said that Anthony had gone to the hospital where he visited Roger and Melissa. He said that after he learned from a relative that he was likely not in his adopted parents' will, he became completely emotionless. In total, the group had managed to steal less than $1,000 worth of cash and valuables from the Blummel home, which Anthony immediately used to buy half a pound of marijuana. With Braden Smith's testimony in hand, defense lawyers for the other three suspects worked to obtain plea deals in the following months to avoid the death penalty for their clients. Though it's not exactly clear why the prosecution eventually agreed, based on what we could find in our research, it appears that the DNA evidence might not have been as solid as they'd wanted, and they decided to avoid a potentially risky trial. Both Kisha Sheberg and Anthony Blummel agreed to plead no contest to capital murder, as well as two charges of aggravated robbery in exchange for being spared the death penalty. In June of 2015, they were each sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole, plus an additional 122 months to be served consecutively. As a condition of their plea, they were not allowed to appeal their sentences. Two months later, Andrew Ellington was sentenced to life in prison without parole for 25 years, plus an additional 155 months, effectively meaning that he would have to serve at least 38 years behind bars. The last person to be sentenced was Braden Smith in October of 2015. Because he held up his end of the deal with the prosecutors, he was given 24 and a half years in prison based on their recommendation. Though the lengthy sentences for all of those involved brought an official end to the case, the suffering caused by the crime was far from over. Christopher Blummel was left without a family once again, and Kish's seven-year-old daughter was left without a mother. For their part, the Blummel family thanked law enforcement officers and prosecutors for bringing justice to their loved ones. The somber mood was perhaps best captured by Roger's sister-in-law, Christina Blummel, who heartbreakingly stated at Anthony's sentencing that while the family was moving forward, they would never be moving on. Do you know of any other cases like this that you think we should check out? Tell us about them in the comments section below. As always, if you enjoyed our video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Crime Zone for more true crime content like this, making sure to hit the notification bell to stay up to date with our latest releases. Thank you for watching.